Rochman Rudy, one of the three Israeli filmmakers arrested by the state's security service, SSS, says the torture they suffered at the hands of the Nigerian secret police shows the suffering of the Southerners, the sufferings of Igbos in Nigeria. According to reports earlier, Mr. Rochman, a Zionist activist, was arrested alongside filmmaker Nahon Liebman and French-Israeli journalist E. David Beniam at the SSS by the SSS over allegations that they supported activities of outlawed indigenous people of Biafra. The trio were arrested during one of their documentary shooting at Ogidi village, Idimili North local government area of Anambra State. And they were simply shooting, according to them, a documentary titled We Were Never Lost, which explores Jewish communities in African countries such as Kenya, Madagascar, Uganda, and Nigeria. As you all know, Southeasterners, particularly the Igbos, have always claimed to originate from Israel. There are a lot of things as regards this theory, not just the Igbos, but that is not what I want to go into today. What we want to talk about is the brutality of this regime and how quick and how swift they go after people. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that this would not have happened in Israel. Israel is not also that gentle nation. They would do say if they re if they feel or believe that there is a threat to their surrounding. Do not think that Israel, all right, let's just put it this way. Israel is just a little bit better in the way they treat people that they see as enemies, a little bit better than the Arab countries. That's just what it is. They are just a little bit better. That is what it is. Israel is not that kind of place where you think uh, it's all liberty. So for this Jewish trio, these three people, for them to say what we suffered in the hands of this SSS shows the suffering of the Southerners, sufferings of the Igbos in Nigeria, that's to let you know that what they experienced is not a joke. Coming from a country where um, things happen. They spent 20 days in detention without being charged to court by the Nigerian government. However, in a statement released on official Instagram page, Mr. Rudy explained that they are set out to tell the story of the evil Jews before their unlawful arrest. This came after the kidnap of Mazen Namdekanu. So they believed that these three people, since Namdekanu has always associated himself with Israel, visited Israel, and um, talked about Jews in Igbo land, the Nigerian government added one and one together, and they felt that these people that came in are trying to create tension in the southeast of Nigeria. In his words, he said, We only managed to film for two days out of the two weeks planned in Igbo land when armed militants wearing black ski masks forced us at gunpoint into a van, stripping us of our phones and passports. We did not see the light of the day or had any form of communication with the outside world till we were released 20 days later. This is what Mr. Rudy wrote. Now, requests have been made to SSS for comments on Mr. Rudy's claim. And of course, you know what it is. There was no response to them. Mr. Rudy stressed the need to reset focus on Igbos who have been living in the reality of the 20 days ill treatment they had suffered in the hands of the Nigerian secret police. He said, now that we are back, it is important to reset and focus on the Igbo Jews who have faced what we went through, the old through their old lives and still live with that reality daily. He added, the Israeli further disclosed that he and his team have been blocked from subsequent visits to Nigeria, meaning they cannot get visas to visit Nigeria. And the Nigerian government will be very careful. In fact, I don't think the Nigerian government will allow anyone 
coming from Israel, anyone bearing Israeli passport or any foreigner going to the southeast of Nigeria, Igbos under President Muhammadu Buhari administration, or let's probably, properly call it a regime, have constantly complained of marginalization and maltreatment. In May, Buhari, in a tweet deemed genocidal threatened, uh, in a tweet, he talked about genocide that happened and he threatened to deal with Igbo youth over the destruction of government facilities in the region. The president, in a post shared on his official Twitter page, vowed that those misbehaving will soon have the shock of their lives while referencing his role during the 1967 Biafra War where over a million people were gruesomely killed. Many of those misbehaving today are too young to be aware of the destruction and loss of lives that occurred during the Nigerian Civil War. He, his post was deleted and he went on to say, those of us in the fields for 13 months who went through the war will treat them in the language they understand. A lot of um, people reacted to this and um, of course, you know what it is. Twitter got banned and, you know, people were looking at all that is ongoing. And um, Lai Mohamed said, um, the, they said Twitter has some very sinister motives in Nigeria. This is what we know. Now, let us look at the comments. Let's see what people are saying. Let's see the reactions of people. Of course, you'll find people from all walks of life. You'll find them um, different regions. Um, and most of the times, the comments are, you know, kind of um, focused on tribe. That's what it is. It's more or less like whatever my tribe does, either right or wrong, is acceptable to me. My own tribesmen are forgiven. Your own tribesmen needs to be called out. That's the nature. Let's see a few of them. One said, I guess one of the solutions to the Nigerian problem is to enact a bill as death sentences for those public funds looters to reduce malpractices and corruption in the system. And I will say I have been following Rudy Rochman for a long time. He isn't just a filmmaker. He's a highly intelligent and held many informative and exclusive arguments with many Israeli and Palestinians on the ongoing dispute in the region. That's when I started following him on Facebook. I was shocked when he said he was detained for three weeks in the SS custody and later deported to Israel. All I noticed was that the last time he posted was when he landed at the Nigerian airport. We won't go anywhere ruling this country unlawfully. Someone said, go to hellfire with your hypocrisy. And this is coming from someone from the north of Nigeria. Someone said, my happiness is that the influence of um, Nigeria is out for the whole world to see their wickedness. Another person said, the only people who come online to support the inactions of government and their killer servants and northerners, that's when you understand what Nigeria is all about. And that's the reality. That's what I told you at the beginning. I said, the comments will go in line with the tribe that you are from. That's what it is. That's what it is. Someone say all they know is oppressing innocent citizens. How can a government agency invade the house of a citizen without a warrant in the dead of the night? This is the highest level of lawlessness and impunity. In the process, two innocent souls were killed and their bodies were taken away. Another lawless act. This is very shameful of this organization. Now, someone said something. Someone said, so it's only Igbos that are being maltreated by the DSS. There are cases of people killed in DSS custody. Even Northerners, I have filed fundamental human rights proceeding against DSS on two occasions and none of the victims were Igbo. So this one is saying they treat even Northerners this way. But um, I'm not um, going to say DSS simply targets um, the Igbos. I think what DSS does, this DSS, what they do is to target anyone who is against the regime of Buhari. That's how they operate. That's what they do. Anyone, if you're a Northerner, um, and you are trying to create a kind of um, problem, direct problem. I'm not talking about this. They are terrorist government, uh, terrorists uh, in the north of Nigeria. For example, look at El Zaki. Look at how they went about El Zaki's case. El Zaki uh, is not um, the type of Muslim that Buhari belongs to. It doesn't belong to that faction of Muslim. And aside that, they do not believe in the constitution of Nigeria and many other things. Look at the way they treated them. Shoot at them. Killed a lot of them. That's what it is. It's a terrible one. 